Would you like to know how to submit the advanced Umsatzsteuer return yourself in ELSA online? Yes? Then this video is exactly the right thing for you because in this video, we'll go through the whole thing together step by step and I'll show you exactly how it works. Hi, my name is Melcher from Contest Tax Consulting and if you're self-employed and have sales that are subject to Umsatzsteuer, then you usually have to file an advance return for Umsatzsteuer. There are a few exceptions, such as the small business regulation or if you have sales that are tax exempt, or if you have sales that are so low that you paid less than 1,000 euros UST last year, then it's enough to file a yearly UST return. However, if you paid more than 1,000 euros in Umsatzsteuer last year, you have to submit an advanced UST return either quarterly or monthly. You can do that with different software solutions, so with an accounting program or something else. If you don't have that and you just want to do it directly, I would always recommend using Elster Online. We will now take a closer look at how this works exactly. An important notice at this point. If you don't know yet what an advanced UST return actually is and whether you have to submit one, you should have a look at the video linked here in the upper right corner because there I go into more detail about what that actually is, when you have to do it and if you have to do it at all. But if you're sure that you have to do one, keep watching. I'm going to take you onto my screen now and then we'll have a look at it step by step. To get started with the advanced Umsatzsteuer return, let's start with the home page. This is what it looks like. If you don't know this at all and don't have access to Elster Online, the first thing you should do is get access. This is not that easy. The authentication is a bit complex because it's really very sensitive data. And because of this, I have already recorded a separate tutorial on how to register with Elster Online in the first place. I'll just link the video here in the upper right corner again. So watch this first if you don't have access yet. What's relatively practical about Elster Online is that you have these tiles at the very beginning and you have the function that you used last. You see, new form, advanced UST return. I could now simply start my advanced return for Umsatzsteuer directly from the homepage. But since this may not be the case for you, let's use the way that will work for all of you. And this is via the left menu by clicking on Forms and Services. I then click on All Forms and then I get a list with headings. These headings can all be unfolded individually with all the things that I can do in Elster Online. So all the forms that I can submit to Elster Online can be found here. You won't really be surprised if I tell you now that the advance return for Umsatzsteuer has something to do with Umsatzsteuer. That's why we click on Umsatzsteuer and we see the advanced Umsatzsteuer return directly and we can continue right away. In the next step, we have to decide for which year we want to make the advanced return. This should not be a very complicated question. We choose the current year. It's 2022 right now and then I click on continue. In the next step, I see a whole list of previous advanced UST returns that I've submitted. This is actually pretty smart because I can just click on Übernehmen here and just copy a previous advance UST return. That usually saves a lot of time because there are a couple of things that I have to include in the advance Umsatzsteuer return that are always the same. My name won't change, for example. My address won't change. My tax number won't change, etc. I can just click Übernehmen here and then all the data that's the same as in the previous month or quarter is carried over and I only have to change the numbers that have changed. If you say, no, I don't want to do that, I like the challenge. You can scroll down all the way and click on continue without data transfer and then you actually start with an empty form. That works too, but I'm lazy or pragmatic depending on which perspective you take, so I click on Übernehmen to transfer the data from last month. In the next step, the data is transferred and I have to click on Start Data Transfer. And now let's go through the form once. Let's talk about the structure first. It is actually structured like any other form in Elster Online. So if you've done this before, this should look familiar to you. I simply have three tabs at the top and the first step is Data Entry. That's what I'll do first. So first I enter my data, the data of the company and so on. Then there's another check mechanism which means I can now check the data again. The system also checks whether I have entered any nonsensical things. For example, whether I have entered my UST number as my tax number. Elster Online checks whether what I have entered is actually plausible. And if that is correct, I go to the next step and click on Send. And then I have an overview of all the information that I have entered and can then send the whole thing to the tax office. 
If I then notice, for example, when checking that there's still an error, I can always go back in the tab. What is also interesting, and what is unfortunately somewhat hidden, is this round button on the left side. This is the menu structure of the form. In the past, the whole thing was filled out on paper, and here you can see the menu structure. First, there's the start page of the form, then the information on the company, cooperation, consulting, etc. There are 11 points altogether in the advanced Umsatzsteuer return that you have to take into account, and to navigate quickly, I don't always have to go back and forth, but can also select it directly here. But let me hide that, because I don't need it right now. Let's start with the start page of the form. Here, we first enter the year and the period. I'm doing the pre-registration for January now. In the next step, I can still say if it's a corrected declaration. That's always important. If, for example, I've forgotten or lost any receipts, or if I notice, whoops, wrong booking, also stupid, then I can always correct the advance return again. And so that the tax office knows that it has been deliberately sent a second or third time and not by mistake, I can always click on corrected declaration. That's important to do so that the tax office really knows that this is a correction for what was previously received. If you haven't submitted it before, of course, you don't have to click correct a declaration because you hadn't sent anything before. It is possible that you have to submit extra receipts or you're supposed to submit extra documentation and here you can now tick that box. Honestly, I would only do that in absolute exceptional cases. An exceptional case would be, for example, that you otherwise do not have enough revenue. For example, you have 5,000 euro sales per month, and that amount of Umsatzsteuer stays relatively constant. And now you buy a car for 100,000 euros. And on these 100,000 euros, 19% will be Umsatzsteuer. And now, instead of paying 500 euros or 1,000 euros Umsatzsteuer, you want to get a refund of 20,000 euros from the tax office. Of course, in that case, the tax office will ask questions. But if you are in a real hurry to get the money for some really big invoices, then you can do that here. If everything is as usual, I wouldn't do it though, and I would not submit separate receipts. The tax office doesn't want them and doesn't need them. But with really big, really extraordinary bills, you can safely assume that if you don't submit them in the first place, the tax office will ask. And if you need the money very, very quickly, you'd better submit them right away, so that the tax office can process them faster. Then there's the data transfer from a profile. Your name, address, tax number, etc. are all specified in your profile at Elser Online. This is then also simply taken over here. Now, if you use your account together with your spouse, you can, for example, also take over the data from another profile. The next step is about the tax number. So here, the Bundesland Brandenburg is now correct. Then your tax number, and then you see your associated tax office. This should also be correct. How does Elster Online know that? Because your tax number contains the number of the tax office. Therefore, Elster Online knows that Königs Wusterhausen is the responsible tax office. On the next page, you have to enter information about your company. To be honest, that's not rocket science either. And honestly, I can't help you much with that either. You have to fill in your name, first name, address, city, postal code, etc. You will know this better than I do. And I believe you can do that without my support. The next step is about participation and consultation. This is always about the tax advisor who might represent you. And you really only have two options here. One, you do it yourself. And then you usually don't have a tax advisor and leave everything blank. Bank. Two, you have a tax advisor and then you're not the person who fills this out, but we or some other tax advisor do it for you. Honestly, we don't usually do that through Elster Online, so we won't enter anything here. This is where you usually enter your tax advisor, so that the tax office can contact your tax advisor directly if it has any questions. Therefore, I can only imagine a few situations in which you actually enter something here. The next step, however, is the much more interesting one, and that is supplies and other services. Other services basically means what it says, so services. So either you deliver a product, that is the sale of goods, or a service. You enter these here, for example, taxable sales at a tax rate of 19%. Those are normal sales. You add up all of them for the quarter or the month and enter the sales here. To simplify things, I stated here that I made 50,000 euros turnover. You always have to enter the assessment basis on the left side and on the right side, the tax is calculated. Of course, that makes for a relatively high tax of 9,500 euros. And of course, there are the 7% tax rates or possibly other tax rates. I don't want to make this video even longer by explaining which other tax rates there may be in Germany. You enter that here in any case. 
This does not apply to me, so I'll leave it blank. What is interesting are the tax-free sales, and they're the ones with input tax deduction, and if we go down, the ones without input tax deduction. If you did a tax-exempt performance, that is, you wrote an invoice and you don't have to show UST on it, in return, you have no possibility to deduct the UST that was invoiced to you for tax purposes. So you simply calculate with the gross amounts. However, there are some services for which you have a tax-exempt service and still have have an input tax deduction. For example, intra-community deliveries, such as exports from another EU country. If you sell something you bought in Germany, you have an input tax deduction and can then export it to Austria and still claim that input tax deduction. And then there are a few more as well. This all relates to paragraph 4 of the Umsatzsteuer Act. Honestly, I could do a webinar of two hours on tax-exempt sales. I'll simply link you paragraph 4 below in the video description. You can also write a comment under this video with what you're doing and then we can discuss if this might have an input tax deduction or not. So here you enter everything that has an input tax deduction. But most of the sales have to be entered here below, specifically the tax exempt sales without input tax deduction. These are, for example, services provided by insurance agents, medical services. Renting out private living space is also exempt from UST. And with all these sales, you don't have to show Umsatzsteuer, but in return, you don't have the possibility to claim the Umsatzsteuer invoice to you in the form of input tax. You still have to report these sales to the tax office, though, here. In the next step, we come to the point of intra-community acquisitions. To be honest, this should also not apply to many of you. Basically, the EU regulates that if you buy something as a company from another company in another EU country, say Denmark for example, you don't have to pay any customs duty. So within the EUs, there are no customs duties. However, as the recipient of the service, you have to take care of the taxation, i.e. the taxation in Germany. Therefore, of course, you have to declare it. There are a few possibilities here. Tax-free intra-community acquisitions. To be honest, these are cases that have never happened to me in my entire life. For example, buying gold as an investment or certain certain particular items. If that applies to you, you'll probably know anyway. I personally haven't come across that in my professional life. What's a bit more common, however, is taxable intra-community acquisitions at the, I would say, normal tax rates. So 19%, 7% or some other tax rates. You can enter these here so that this is also correctly recorded for tax purposes. In the next step, we get to an area that would completely blow up this video, if I were to explain it here as well, namely the area of the reverse charge procedure. Reverse charge procedure very briefly means that the recipient of a service is responsible for the taxation. If you perform a consulting service for a company in Austria, then you write a net invoice and your customer has to pay the tax in Austria. This also applies the other way around. If you are being advised by a company from Austria or Denmark, France or Spain or any other EU country, you have have to pay the tax in Germany. You have to pay the tax on what you have been invoiced, but you can also claim this tax at the same time. This is financially no problem at all because you simply calculate plus and minus and in the end, you don't pay more. To understand this principle better, I have already recorded an in-depth video in which I explain exactly why this is done this way and why this might be a decent solution even if it is a bit confusing. I explain all of that in the video which I'll link in the top right corner. So if the whole topic is too confusing for you, be sure to check out this video where I explain exactly step by step how the process works. And then you'll know where to add this. In the next step, we get to the supplemental information on sales. Most of this is completely irrelevant. For example, the delivery of the first customer in intra-community triangular relationships. Sometimes there are triangular transactions, a super complex issue. If you're dealing with that, you should really dig down on that. And to be honest, I would also recommend that you consult your tax advisor. But what may actually be interesting for some of you is the area of non-taxable other services according to paragraph 18b sentence 1 number 2 Umsatzsteuergesetz and other non-taxable transactions where their place of performance is not in Germany. These are basically the reverse charge sales that you have invoiced to someone else. Let's stay with our example. If you performed a consulting service for an Austrian company and you are based in Germany, the place of performance is not in Germany but Austria. Because in B2B transactions, the place of performance for UST purposes is always where the customer is located. You would have to enter this here. This is completely irrelevant for your UST payment burden. But if you invoiced another company and performed a consulting service, then you would actually have to enter here that you made this turnover. This has no effect on your Umsatzsteuer. You still have to register it though. And now we get to the fun step. 
And the fun step are the taxes that you can get back. All of the taxes that you are being charged, you can reduce. If you have more input tax, so you've been charged more umsatzsteuer than you charge yourself, you even get that difference back. You have to enter that here. The most important field here is field number 55. There, you have to list everything added together that was invoiced. This is a little bit confusing and honestly, I don't know exactly why it's done this way. Because you have to indicate the assessment basis for your sales earlier and here you have to indicate the tax amount. Please don't make any mistakes, otherwise the calculation will be wrong very quickly. You have to include all Umsatzsteuer amounts that you were invoiced i.e. from your landlord, from the person who sold you equipment, from hotels, from hotel trips, from whatever you can have as a business expense. You add it all up and enter them here. But on this page, you also enter all the other Umsatzsteuer amounts that you can somehow claim. For example, here, the input tax amounts from intra-community acquisitions of goods. That's exactly the counterpart to what we talked about earlier, or the incurred import UST from imports from abroad. Or also, and this might be relevant for some of you, the input tax amounts from services in terms of paragraph 13b Umsatzsteuergesetz. 13b is always the buzzword for reverse charge. That's the UST amount that you have already entered before. And let's say you received a consulting service for 10,000 euros, you have to pay 1,900 euros, but you can also claim these 1,900 euros back in this field. Elster complains immediately if you enter Umsatzsteuer on one side and on the other side only the input tax. Elster makes sure that this is consistent. But this is the field where you have to enter what you can offset. And then, of course, there are a few more options, but those are the most important ones. We'll go to the next page for that. Here are some other tax amounts, but honestly, that shouldn't be particularly relevant to you, so I'll just skip that here. Let's move on to the Umsatzsteuer prepayment surplus. So, an overview of the calculation. We now have the information that we put in. In the first step, we have the total taxable sales. I had indicated that I made 50,000 euros in sales at a tax rate of 19%. That results in 9,500 euros in taxes. I don't have anything else, which is why the sum of the Umsatzsteuer is 9,500 euros. And from this, I can now deduct the input tax amounts, and in total, I had indicated 4,000 euros of input tax. This leads me to a remaining amount of 5,500 euros in taxes. At the bottom, there's then still the possibility to offset and adjust a little bit, etc. This then relates to special advance payments that may need to be offset, for example. That doesn't apply to me now, so I see here, okay, that's the amount that I have to pay, and I can go on to the next page. Here again, there's an indication that does not apply to 99% of you, which is why I'll skip this step as well. And the last step, the 11th step, that's other information. This could be interesting for some of you, because it's possible that you now get a Umsatzsteuer refund, but at the same time you have to pay back taxes for another period or maybe for another type of tax, such as income tax. But you do not receive Umsatzsteuer. Then you can ask for that to be offset. To be honest, most of the time the tax office will offset it regardless of whether you check the box or not. But here you can actively ask for it. Otherwise, I always recommend that you pay your taxes by direct debit, with the direct debit procedure from the tax office. This way you always automatically meet all payment deadlines and that's really to your advantage. But of course, you have the possibility to revoke the whole thing at any time with a simple tick here. If you say, I would also like the tax office to simply collect the tax amounts, I don't always want to transfer for that separately. Why don't you set up a direct debit mandate? I have already recorded a video on how to do this, which I'll link in the upper right corner. And then there are also other details here, but those are not relevant for most of you. In the next step, we get to double check everything. We can see the tabs here at the top, enter and check. Now we are at check and the good news first, there are no errors. That means that I could submit the advance return for Umsatzsteuer as it is now. But there are some reminders and that's unfortunately not very well made because they are hidden in this menu icon on the left. I can expand it once here and then I can read all the points and decide whether this is a good suggestion and whether I have to change anything or not. But I'm sure that I can live with what I've entered and so I click on next. And then I'm basically at the last final step. I can see an overview of all the things that I've entered. Check everything again. And if I'm happy with it, I click on send and the advance return for Umsatzsteuer is sent to the tax office. 
I hope this video has given you a bit of clarity. If you're now thinking, advanced Umsatzsteuer return is all well and good, but I don't feel like it, I don't want to do it, then I have a great tip for you. Just don't do it. Give it to a tax consultant. Let him have fun with it, sometimes at least. For example, we are tax consultants who can do it for you. We are specialized online tax consultants for freelancers and self-employed. Of course, we do a lot of advanced UST returns for all our clients on an ongoing basis. And we could also do yours in the future. Then you don't need Elster Online at all. All the information about our services are linked here. So feel free to have a look. Be sure to check out our online community as well. I'll explain what that is here. But also have a look at our other Elster tutorials such as this one.